Communications here at the College of Europe in Natolin, and it is my true pleasure and honor to guide you today through this Natolin graduation ceremony of the Hannah Arendt promotion 2019-2020. However, before we start with today's celebration, I would like to ask you all to stand up and take a moment to commemorate the life of Rector Jerzy Łukaszewski, who sadly passed away earlier this month. Rector Łukaszewski dedicated 30 years of his life to the College of Europe, out of which 18 as rector. Please join us for one minute of silence and remembrance. Thank you very much. Please remain standing, <laughs> as it is particularly in honor of Rector Łukaszewski and in recognition of his commitment to the European idea that the NATO Choir, who I now invite to join the stage, will sing the Ode to Joy, through which we shall officially mark the start of this graduation ceremony. Please, the choir.
Thank you. Please take your seats. Before we continue, may I just say how beautiful you all look? Natolinians, such an outstanding promotion this year. Robert, can you show the audience to our viewers following us online for a moment? Okay. <laughs> it's, I would like you to say hello to your families and, and, and you know, friends watching you online. Ah, here we go. Okay. <laughs> yeah, say hello. <laughs> Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now it is my great honor and privilege to invite our very own Vice Rector, Mrs. Eva Oshnetska Tametska, to the stage to welcome the guests. Pani Rector. Dear honored guests, dear parents of our students, dear professors, dear students, dear colleagues, both those who joined us in person and online, it is my great pleasure to welcome you all at the graduation ceremony of the 2019-2020 academic year. And I would like to thank the Natalin Choir for opening our celebration with such a wonderful performance. <laughs> we come together today to celebrate the end of this academic year. A tinge of sadness starts appearing. It seemed not so long ago when I delivered my opening speech, and now 10 months have passed by, and it is already the graduation ceremony. Some of our students, parents, but also professors, could not join us in person for this graduation ceremony, but I would like to extend my special greetings to everyone joining us remotely today. Dear parents, we are proud, as you are, of your sons and daughters. And we are also convinced that this year of studies at the College of Europe in Natalin helped them to develop themselves. Today, we return to the tradition of inviting an alumni speaker I would like to welcome Bram van Hecke from the Manuel Marine Promotion, who will join us on the stage in a moment to deliver our Natalin alumnus address. Bram now works as president of Grone Kring, a Flemish association of young farmers. Bram was one of the most active students in the Marineros community. He served as his promotion's vice president for welfare and leisure, becoming a dear friend to a close-knit community. For many of us, graduation is not just a moment for celebration, but also a time when we can reflect on and be inspired by all the opportunities that lie ahead of us. It's therefore my pleasure to invite Bram to talk about his post-graduation story and career path. Bram, your work now allows you to navigate issues related to food quality and safety, economics, and welfare during the current pandemicals. We look forward to hearing you, your perspectives on community, responsibility, and leadership and about your memories from Natalie. And we are, of course, so incredibly proud to count you among our alumni. Bram, the, the floor is yours and the stage is yours.
Thank you, Madam Vice Rector, for the, for the compliments. It's almost too much. <laughs> dear distinguished guests, but most of all, dear Arantians, I am proud to stand here in front of you as an alumnus of the College of Europe in Natolin, as you will be after today. I would like to congratulate you on this achievement. The college here in Natolin is challenging in many ways, and the fact that you successfully made it to this final day is a victory. The mountains might have been high, but the toughest climbs reward you with the most wonderful views. The road was long and perilous, yet you never walked alone. Around you were many friends who now almost became family. Today, at the end of the academic year, you should be proud of yourselves. What you have achieved is no more than extraordinary. Before I go on, I should most probably tell you who I am. Um, most of you have maybe seen me around. I was here yesterday on, on your fantastic open midnight. The people at home may also know that. It was not live streamed. Um, but I think explaining my story here is appropriate. And it's actually quite simple. I was born on a farm in Belgium. It might seem odd, but my life has centered itself around that farm. It has centered itself around farms in general, and even more so around farmers. It seems to be quite a niche topic, right? Yet I don't think it is. It's an essential building block of our countryside. It's an essential building block of the food we eat at least three times a day. It's an essential building block of all of your home countries, also mine. And finally, it's an essential building block of all common Europe. For that reason, I was a student of Natalin myself one year ago. After that year, I became president of Grüne Kring, the Young Farmers Association of Flanders. And what I am head of now is a movement of over 3,000 young farmers who work tirelessly to provide healthy, sustainable and affordable food for this and the coming generation. As an organization, we unite young farmers. We bring them together. But we also train them. We make them ready to take over the farm. And finally, we also represent them in front of local, federal and European authorities. Young farmers are the future of our food system. They are key to anybody who strives for a sustainable future. And it is them that feed the world. I know that many of you have discussed and talked about uh, issues in sustainability plenty of times this year. Climate change, also the Green Deal, which is now happening in the European Union, very important topics. Well, that's also what we still do. Think about those things. Try to find solutions. And what, what we always find is that, yes, we need to go forward. We need to move forward. But we also need to do it together. Without farmers moving forward, means there will be no food in the future. And if there's no food, there will be no future. That is why it's crucial that young farmers are able to develop their farms, have a fair income and a stable future. I wake up with that goal in my mind every morning. I know that for you, this year has been challenging, not only because of the usual things in the college. The coronavirus has changed the lives of all of us. For young farmers in Flanders, times have been challenging as well. It is one of those times that you know who you can count on. That is what our movement tried to do. We try to be close, supporting, helping and caring. I try to be a pillar to lean on, to help young farmers and to try to find opportunities within this whole crisis. That is what kept me busy. And I can tell you, without Natolin, I wouldn't have been doing what I do now. Without Natalin, I wouldn't have been where I am now. There's plenty of reasons for that. I don't have to explain all of you that the long days full of classes, the late night study sessions, the seemingly endless reading lists, well, that they enriched us 
as much as we all have detested it when we had to do it, we do now understand that it made us richer, better human beings. Yet, the college does not only give knowledge. The deepest friendships, they sprout here on this very campus. Living together for a year unites people forever. On this campus, all of you went through happiness, sadness, stress, relief, and joy. And it's friendship that spices life and that gives color to this world. Well, I can tell you, to me, Natalin is a warm and affectionate place. And finally, what makes the big difference here is the values the college stands for. You live together in such a small yet diverse community. You shared happiness and tears. You worked hard. You had deep discussions about all kinds of societal topics. Well, out of that, I conclude that Natalin is more than a university. This institute pushes you to your limits and turns ambition into action. The values I have learned here are still my guiding lines for the actions I take today. Natalin still marks me. One of those values is ambition to make change happen. I work every day to make sure that young farmers are able to start up their farm and produce food for the world. It is what I believe this year has all been about. Not about just one extra year of studies in Poland. No, about working towards change. The students who graduate from this college, and I mean that, are among the most talented young people in Europe. Many of you in the coming years will land great jobs, maybe in the so-called Brussels bubble. However hard that might seem from this point, believe me. Yet, don't let anybody lure you into starting a job that is safe and, let's be honest, boring. Don't fall into the trap of a career that doesn't bring that change and doesn't match your ambitions. Your talents, they do not only give you the power to, to work towards your ambitions, they also give you the duty to strive for the greater good. Over the past 10 months, you have learned what diversity means. You have discussed about the values of integration and the challenges it brings. You have come to understand how a number of individuals become far more when they stand as one, all together. Well, I tell you, now is not the time to rest on your laurels. Now is not the time to sit down and look back on the work you have done. What is in front of you, your professional careers, the rest of your lives, should not be a slowly meandering river, but a strong stream that changes what comes across its path. Well, that is the duty you have, to fight for the values you believe in, to be ambitious, to bring change. That change doesn't just happen within the Brussels bureaucracy circles. It starts within your small hometowns. That change doesn't just happen uh, with beautiful job titles, but just as well with ungrateful jobs, which people comfortably choose to ignore, but do impact so many of us. And that change doesn't only come in the big overarching topics you've discussed over and over again, but also in the more niche subjects that seem quite unattractive. That change we all want for our common Europe, for this world, well, I tell you, it lies within you. It lies within all of you. And not using your talents for that change, well, it is nothing more than immoral. Therefore, I call on you. Stay ambitious and stay together. Aim high and make it happen. Thank you. Thank you, Bram, for your inspiring address, for showing us how strong the Natolin community is, and for reminding us that we Natolinians have a responsibility 
in your words, to be close, supporting, helping, and caring for others. So thank you once again. Dear students, as the academic year is coming to an end, so it is time for us to acknowledge your work, your academic performance. So without any further delay, I would like to ask Madam Vice Rector to join us back on stage so that we begin the process of giving out our end of year academic prizes and we will start with the external master's thesis competition. Madam Vice Rector. As Mattia said, the academic year is coming to an end and we have to start celebrations, our achievements. Some of you will soon get on the stage to receive awards, but I want to emphasize that we are of course very proud of everyone's accomplishments. Only some of you will be asked on behalf of others to be on the stage. And so without further delay, let me announce the winners of the external competitions for outstanding master thesis. We will start with the European People's Party Group Award for the best thesis on the role and contribution of the European Parliament and its political groups goes to Jacopo Giraudo. Jacopo receives the certificate that he won, I would like to say that uh, he conducted an excellent analysis of the relationship between national identities and European identity, in part through extensive interviews with the European Parliament group. Congratulations, Jacopo, and please, that's your that's your award, and I would like to, to say that the award is five months paid. Jacopo will start his internship in September, Jacopo, in September, so it's very soon. <laughs> Our next award, the Energy Community Secretariat Award, for the best thesis on European energy governance, goes to Lies van Vliet. <laughs> This work analyzed the contrast between discussions on renewable energy in the EU, which were well documented, on, and on a high level, and discourse in the wider energy community, which has received far less attention so far. Thank you very much for your contribution, then. Um, please receive a award, and the award is three month internship in Vienna. <laughs> I would also like to present an Amphori Award for the best thesis on EU trade policy, which goes to Imer Gerard. looked at the EU's comprehensive economic and trade agreement with Canada 
and what the negotiations around it revealed about the EU's capacity to act as a global actor and climate leader. Congratulations, Imran, and uh, your award is publication on the Amphori webpage and the cash prize. <laughs> Next up, the Sergio Lopez Perona Memorial Prize, awarded to the student who put forward the best thesis on the EU's relations in the Middle East, which goes to Daphne Argiraki. Daphne used Foucault's work as a lens through which to view the, the norms and power dynamics the EU project through its civilization mission in contested states. Congratulations, Daphne, uh, certificate and cash prize. Thank you. Um, The Jan Olaf Hauster Memorial Award for the best thesis on transatlantic affairs, written as part of the MATA program, goes execfo with her Bruce colleague to Patricia Javorek. Patricia Javorek is a student of the last promotion. I don't know whether she is with us. Um, we don't know. We have informed her we hope that she is with us. If not, she will see us on YouTube. I would like to congratulate to Patricia. I'm, I'm, if not mistaken, watching us online. No signals, I don't know. So applause for her. As our final awards of the afternoon, it is my pleasure to announce the winners of the prize of the Italian Presidency of the Council of Ministers. This award is open to all Italian students at both campuses, but this year's recipients from Natalin are Jacopo Giraud. <laughs> Maria Lelendi, exactly. My congratulations to all award winners. That's it. We can go to the next point of today's ceremony. Martina. Thank you, Madam Vice Rector. Congratulations to all winners. Feels more and more like a Academy Awards here. Um, before we announce the best students within our four majors of the academic program, and before we discover the best overall student of the academic year here at Natolin, uh, I would like to underline with great pleasure that here at the College of Europe in Natolin we have two world-class academic chairs that every year give out prizes in their domain. So particularly an outstanding contribution in the domain of European neighborhood policy and an outstanding contribution in the domain of European history and civilization. So now to start with European history and civilization, I would like to invite to the stage Professor Richard batovic Pavlikovsky, the chairholder of the History Chair at Natolin. Thank you. Thank you. It's great to see you all again. Now, this, these are strange times, and I would like to congratulate you for having 
coped with these strange times so well. And in these strange times, there is no shortage of people who will try to tell you what and how to think. So my last piece of advice to you is don't subcontract your thinking to others. Have courage to use your own understanding. <clears throat> As the ancient Roman poet Horatius put it, recycled by Immanuel Kant at the end of the 18th century, sapere aude, dare to think. So look behind the slogans, compare the arguments, weigh up the evidence, skeptically, not cynically. Because the other easy option is to say, well, they all lie, so I'll just believe whatever suits me. There is a difference between an argument and an uninformed opinion. Now, the winner of the prize for the best uh, master's thesis in the field of European history and civilization certainly took that message to heart. Unfortunately, he can't be with us today, uh, but I would like you all to join me in congratulating Grzegorz Szymborski. <laughs> So well done, Grzegorz, and all the very best to you and your family in Olsztyn. I'll be staying on the stage while my friend and colleague uh, Tobias Schumacher uh, announces the winners for his chair. We should, be, we should be connected with Tobias Schumacher, who is in Vienna. Oh! Hello, Professor Schumacher. Welcome to the closing ceremony at Natolin. The floor is yours. Thank you very much, Mattia. Dear Vice Rector, dear colleagues, dear students, dear parents of our students, dear Natolinians, good afternoon. Unfortunately, as you can see, I can't be physically present at today's closing ceremony, but thanks to modern technologies, I do fortunately have the chance and I'm very happy about it, to contribute to this moment, at least virtually. Now, before I will announce the winner of this year's ENP Chair Book Award, or rather awards, as we have two winners, and the names of the students of the EUN major who will be given the opportunity to attend the upcoming Eastern Partnership Youth Engagement Summit, also I would like to very briefly, I hope, make just some one or two personal remarks within the very few moments and minutes I have at my disposal. Now, what I would like to say is very simple, and it revolves mainly around two points, namely your time spent at Natolin and your time post Natolin. Now, as far as the first point is concerned, namely your time at Natolin, I would, like the Vice Rector, like Professor Batevik Pavlikovsky and Bram, first and foremost, like to sincerely thank you and wholeheartedly congratulate you. I vividly recall the wise words of our Vice Rector, who in one of her very first messages to you in early March, as we all had to adapt to the new hygiene and safety related regulations, pointed out that the outbreak of the COVID-19 pandemic provided you with a chance a chance to make a difference, to make a significant contribution, and therefore to leave a positive and important mark on the world. And you did. You left quite a mark indeed. Thanks to your enormous commitment and support, as was said before, we could rescue this academic year. And not just rescue it, but I think, and I echo what has been said before, even embark on a unique and eventually even successful learning experience that no one of us will ever forget. And of course, it is thanks to your considerate, cautious and responsible behavior that Natalin throughout all these months remained a safe place rather than become a hotspot 
for the spread of the virus. So I would also like to join my colleagues and thank you very much for, for that. As said, I also want to congratulate you. You made it. You survived a rather intense and demanding academic program. You took all exams, I hope at least, and you performed impressively throughout the last 10 months, beyond, of course, the pandemic-related confines. Congratulations, you did extremely well, and you have all reason to be proud of yourself. Now, in conjunction with your time at Natolin, there's a tiny little sub-point, if I may, that I would like to stress, and that is that I would also like to thank you for having helped us, us, the academic staff, to reflect on and question our own scholarly views, our academic thinking. You have allowed us to learn from you and your expertise, and this is something that I'm particularly grateful for and regard as particularly valuable. As far as the second point is concerned, namely your time post Natalin, well, there's basically just one tiny little piece of unsolicited, if you wish, advice that I would like to offer, and it picks up on what Brahm said so very eloquently before. While I know that some of you, or maybe even many of you, have already made very concrete plans for how your immediate and more distant professional future shall look like, I do, we do, know that there are some that are still uncertain, that are still wondering about which path to embark on, that still do not know which way to go. And it so happens that with this uncertainty comes very often a bit of nervousness and often even anxiety. Taking this into account, let me say loud and clear, don't be nervous. Do not worry if the blue book didn't work out. Don't worry if you didn't get into the PhD program you so much wanted to get into. Don't worry if your application for this internship or that job didn't work out. Please don't despair if, as I said, you don't even know what will happen as of tomorrow. At the end of the day, and I think this is what the pandemic really learned us, taught us, sorry, who knows? Sometimes it takes time to find out what one really wants. But in order to be able to find out what you really are after, what you really want to do with your professional life post Natalin, you simply, and Bram said that as well in his words, must not follow into the footsteps of others, just because for whatever reason, you may think that this is what appears to be the most logical step. Mm -hmm. All I would like to say is, if the goal, the dream that you want to pursue seems out of sight or unreachable, don't give up. Be persistent, be inventive, take a detour if need be, walk the extra mile, and do all of this without losing your overall objective out of sight. You're most likely to succeed in your future endeavors as long as you give yourself the time to carefully reflect on your goals and your dreams, and as long as you're willing to fight for them. In any case, rest assured that my very best wishes, our very best wishes, accompany you on that journey. Having said all that, I would now like to move on to announcing the winners of this year's ENP Chair Book Awards for the best MA thesis on an ENP neighborhood related topic. And I would also like to announce, as said, the names of those that have qualified for participation at the upcoming Eastern Partnership Youth Engagement Summit in early July. The winners of this year's ENP Chair Book Award are two students who each wrote very well researched, thoroughly conceptualized, excellently structured, and most accessible thesis. The winning thesis are Trade and Peace, the DCFTA as a tool of conflict management, and disentangling the link between accession conditionality and implementation of EU energy rules, how to explain Ukraine's best performance in the energy community. Please join me in giving a very warm round of applause to Lola Ferrand and Maria Lely. And last but not least, and thanks to the kind support of the Directorate General for Neighborhood and Enlargement Negotiations of the European Commission, 
the students from the UN major that have been selected to attend and participate in the upcoming Eastern Partnership Youth Engagement Summit are Laura Talia and Guillaume Guasini. And a very warm round of congratulations and applause to them as well. And as I'm not physically present, the awards will now kindly be handed over by my colleague and friend, Professor Richard Butterwick Pavlikovsky. Thank you very much for your attention and enjoy the rest of this afternoon, your afternoon. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Schumacher. Thank you, Professor Batovic Pavlikovsky. Congratulations once again to, to everyone. So, ladies and gentlemen, it is now time to announce the best students of the Hannah Arendt promotion 2019-2020. So we will begin with our four dedicated majors here at Natolin. And these prizes are given on the basis of the overall score of the students across the academic year. So to announce this, I would like to invite Professor Pascaline Vinon, Director of Studies of the European Interdisciplinary Studies Department here at the College of Europe in Natolin. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I will not give a big speech, but I wanted to simply tell you how proud I am of you. Uh, I, I had the great pleasure of receiving the news of the awards as they came, you know, one by one, and I was so, 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 so pleased. I mean, in spite of all the difficulties this year, you know, with the COVID-19, uh, I know that one of you even had a broken arm. Well, you know, <laughs> you went through all of this and you still managed, you know, to get excellent, excellent results. This is one of uh, our best years, certainly in terms of the awards. Um, and now it is my gr great pleasure to uh, announce the, the winners. And before I do that, I would like to uh, perhaps um, continue on the same path of you know, uh, all the different speakers that we've had the pleasure to listen uh, to today and to tell you to uh, design your own future. But remember, you're not alone. You made many friends here, and you still have your professors. We will not you know, give up on you once you leave here. We're still there for you if you need letters of recommendations, advice. So we'll still be there for you. So it was a great, great pleasure uh, to uh, be your director of studies and also uh, your professor this year. Thank you so much for what you've uh, given us uh, and so I'm very heartened and very pleased to give you the news. So, suspense. <laughs> the best student in the EU Public Affairs and Policies uh, major is Rose Woolhouse. <laughs> Suspense. The best students in the EU in the world major, there are two of you. Emer Gerard and Elena Heyman. So you can both come. So Elena. Suspense again, the best student in the EU and its neighbors major, Caroline Gardner. <laughs> Again, more suspense, the best student in the European history and civilization major, 
Jacopo, you know, again. And now we'd like to invite the, the vice rector because this is the time to announce the um, best student in the promotion. And we would like to congratulate this student together. The best student is Caroline Gardner. Thank you, Vice Rector. Thank you, Professor Vinant, and congratulations once again to all winners. So, ladies and gentlemen, we have come to the final part of our graduation ceremony, maybe the most emotional because it's time for farewell addresses and speeches. So, to give the first of this, I would like to invite on stage our Natalin student president, I have seen her already, Sarah Morgan who will deliver the speech in the name of the student representatives of the Hannah Arendt promotion at Natolin. Sara, the floor is yours. Dear Madam Vice Rector, dear professors, the beloved staff of the Natolin campus, fellow Rentians, and to our friends and family in Natolin and further afield. As student president, I'm honored to represent the Hannah Arendt promotion today at our graduation. First of all, though, I'd like to say congratulations, guys. We did it. <laughs> when we started this journey 10 months ago, we were told of the intense year ahead, the highs and lows that we would experience. But we were also told of the memories we would make, the friendships and families that would form, and the future weddings that will happen. <laughs> the journey we have gone on will forever be unique to our promotion. Three months ago, we had not heard a Zoom, and now many of us are graduating through it. We are Rentians throughout this period of uncertainty as a promotion have remained united, whether in Mexico, the United Kingdom, Sweden, Italy, Ireland, France, Hungary, Germany, Ukraine, Spain, the Netherlands, or here at home in Natlin. What the college has given us goes far beyond its rigorous academic program and matrix-like scheduling, but the creation of our Natalinian family we came to Natalin because we care about the world, what happens to it, and who leads it. We have so, been so privileged in education and opportunity that has been given to us to broaden our horizons and learn about the EU and its relations with the world. This privilege has also bestowed a duty on us to stand up as leaders when a at a time when the world seems to become more and more uncertain. This is a duty that we will carry with us through the rest of our lives. Our time at Natlin has laid a tremendous foundation for us all to achieve this. But our promotion's best asset is the people who have created so many events and memories for us all, to name a few. The open mic nights, in which we have seen the amazing talent of our students and staff, and etched the words of Doc Teros into our collective memories. <laughs> Space Week, which if I may say was out of this world the Forest Week in which we all made our tree poses, the Energy Conference, the Nat Olympics in which Rettinger had a great victory over Rodkovic, the LGBTQI plus weekend, the numerous parties organized by the Social Committee, the many newsletters which have kept us informed throughout the year, the national days in which we visited different countries and even took a trip to Hogwarts, and finally the student staff football match that took place last, yesterday. 
In Irish, we have a saying, it translates as, in the shadows of each other we live, which I think after 10 months of studying, eating, living together, we can safely say we have. But it means more than that. It means that we shield and protect each other. And this could not have been more proven than how as a community we united during these frightening times. Fundamental to this trusting atmosphere on our campus were the student confidants and ombudsman for diversity and inclusion, Henry Naylor, who have ensured that everyone on this campus feels safe and at home. I'd also like to thank my fellow student representatives, Iris Van Loon, the Vice President for, uh, for Welfare and Leisure, Eugenia Del Rosario, the Vice President for Academic Affairs and Languages, Anna Maria Levi, the Vice President for Professional De Development and Societies, for the work they have done throughout the year and the commitment to our promotion. And I would like to give a special thank you to our student representative Eugenia and the newly elected task force who has supported the entire campus during quarantine and rose to the challenge going above and beyond what anything could have been expected of them. We would like to say a massive jankuya to the amazing staff of the Natalin campus. Madam Vice Rector, Pani Stasha and the canteen staff, all of the Annas in the residence office, the guards, student affairs office who have supported every need imaginable, Professor Bidnond and the academic administration, the library, the academic assistants, the tech and ICT team, which as you can see, as you can see have done incredible work to make this graduation possible both physically and virtually. And finally to our wonderful professors and language teachers, thank you from the bottom of our hearts for all your efforts throughout the year, but specifically for the last two months who, which, in which you have selflessly and tirelessly cared for us and kept our Natalin home safe. Madam Vice Rector, after my speech, I would like to invite you up to give you a gift on behalf of the promotion. And everyone else, we'd like to invite you to stay for a few minutes after the ceremony so we can hand them to you then. When we look back on our time here, what will stick with us is the lasting friendships, the jokes, our friends from the UK and France. <laughs> Not understanding a word I say, even though it's in English. <laughs> the Zimnaki with Dill, Elvire's famous emails, celebrating the birth of baby Leo, <laughs> dancing at the Ukrainian-Polish border, workouts with Niklas, going to the canteen and unexpectedly buying five nunnies for a night in the bar and singing Bogoya. <laughs> the many lessons, languages and laughs of the Hannah Arendt promotion are only 10 months in the making, but will last a lifetime. For one last time, we are sincerely and arrently yours, the student representatives. Dear Sarah, dear student representatives, thank you very much for this beautiful speech. And um, it is now time for the farewell address 2020. So I have to invite once again Madam Vice Rector to the stage, please. Yes, it's true. It's time to say goodbye. Always it comes, and always it's sad for me, as for others sitting here. But I have to do it. Dear honored guests, dear professors, dear students, dear parents of the students, dear friends of the college. The time has come for us to say goodbye and thank you for your ideas and initiatives for the unique community you have created here, for all you have done here this year, dear students. The past months have not been easy, but all crises have a way bringing out the best in us. 
The pandemic taught us so much about reinforcing solidarity, leadership, and community. Faced with a challenge, as Sarah said, we rose up to it. We resisted, and we will resist. During these difficult times, my thoughts could only drift towards the idea of solidarity. It's deeply intertwined with Poland's recent history. Forty years ago, a trade union called Solidarność or Solidarity formed following demonstrations at the Gdańsk shipyard. But it was much more than just a trade union. It preached ideas of social justice, human rights, and democracy. Its members who left a permanent mark in history fought a dehumanizing communist regime, risking and sometimes losing their lives. The quality of solidarity that builds a community was a deciding factor in their success. Solidarność sparked massive political changes, not only in Poland, but also beyond. Its ideas inspired people over Europe. Authoritarian systems collapsed. The old continent was finally reunited. History taught us how ideas of solidarity, of people supporting one another through the hardest of hardships, changed the world for better. The Solidarność protesters chanted a powerful slogan, Nie ma wolności bez Solidarność. There can be no freedom without solidarity. No democracy without community. But is this idea still important to us today? The past few months certainly affirm the everlasting validity of these words. Yet again, that humanity needs them to survive and carry on. In times of pandemic, there can be no safety without social solidarity, and only we can bring it to life and cherish. We have borne witness to beautiful moments of community, people maintaining physical distancing rules while calling and supporting their loved ones, doctors and nurses working superhuman shifts, people shopping for friends or neighbors in need, checking up on each other, a sense of hope and community. The beauty lies in the fact that it is also us who managed to create a unique, strong and durable bond through this experience of hardship and adversity. Our campus also witnessed an incredible embodiment of solidarity. I would like to join to all thanks, everyone, to everyone from our team who took part therein, both those we see every day and those who were less visible, despite their crucial work. Cleaning staff, restaurant staff, technicians, the library services, student support. They showed up every day, working endless hours to keep our campus going. We Natolinians stayed together. Thank you for that. I would like to thank the whole student community too. Student societies continued to operate. We maintained the tradition of national days. So many events took place. We kept strong through all of this. I would like to express my sincere gratitude to all of you for that, dear students. Thank you so much for that. <clears throat> dear Bram, thank you for joining us, for sharing, sharing your vision of responsibility and leadership. 
It's always wonderful to invite alumni back to Natalin to share in a spirit of cross-generational solidarity and responsibility. It always fills us with pride to see the amazing work our alumni do after graduation. Dear Bram, you are a very good example of the leadership. Natalin graduates are capable of, and it's such a joy to have you join us today. I wish you that the most wonderful views from the hills you will climb during your journey, during your life. All the best, ma'am. Dear students, I would like to refer to a famous book of Nobel Prize winner Albert Camus, The Plague. The choice of this work for the subject of this very short analysis is far from incidental. It has much to teach us about our modern world and the attitudes to be adopted in the face of adversity. The French writer and philosopher saw heroism in the everyday. In the plague, there is no single hero who stands far above the rest. The book is notable for its lack of huge battles and grand gestures. Its heroes pursue every day almost mundane duties. The doctor who would travel between the hospital and people's houses. The guards who kept quarantine. The journalist who refused to escape from the city helping his friend to fight the plague. The fight against the pandemic too has forced us to think what it means to be a hero, what it means to be a leader. Battling it and its devastating after effects requires a new type of leadership. A leadership built on consistency and truthfulness that fight deep injustices. A leadership that values the idea of repair preparation and responsibility. We rush to build the next great thing. Our society is often obsessed with loud gestures, fast growth and big startups. Repair, however, is necessary. It means addressing the inequalities and injustices the coronavirus so deeply laid bare. Though much needed, such repair feels boring. We don't need loud and empty slogans or easy fixes. Their power lies in their simplicity and ability to mobilize, but inadequacy to deliver. A society reflecting on its wounds requires a new pace of politics and leadership, consistent and honest, going beyond the comfort zone of political catchphrases. Good leaders recognize the value of preparedness. Many health experts fear a second wave of pandemic. We must pre prepare ourselves for it. Still, the process of preparing can prove deeply unrewarding. Preparation can be wrongly perceived as the opposite of action. It can be an invisible and ungrateful act unless we imagine that the worst case scenario we question if our leaders over prepared. True leadership requires immense courage and as such can be a very solitary endeavor. This includes investing in quiet preparations no matter how unpopular it may be. Lastly, leadership remains responsibility that doesn't just limit itself to accountability. It extends to a sense of duty and sacrifice. A duty to take best care of those we are responsible for, no matter how much it requires from us. These best efforts will not always be successful but trying your hardest and remaining strong in the face of obligation is a success of its own. That also means that you must not be overconfident. Always be aware of the circumstances in which you ought to act. 
I think back to the Nobel speech Albert Camus gave in 1957. He started it with a mark of profound gratitude for rece receiving this distinction. He then decided to refer to the writer's role, which is not free from difficult duties and responsibilities. Responsibilities vis-a-vis -vis others, being solidar with those who are in need. He said that, and I quote, the quelqu'un aussi pouvait-il recevoir cet honneur à l'air où, en Europe, d'autres écrivains parmi les plus grands sont réduits en silence. Et dans le temps même où sa terre natale connaît un malheur en ce son. And he continued, l'écrivain, il ne peut se mettre aujourd'hui au service de ceux qui font l'histoire. Il est au service de ceux qui la subissent. End of the quote. Responsibility requires empathy. If you ask me what matters most in life, I will say without any hesitation, it is people. Dear students, dear colleagues, I would like to thank all of you once again for the joy and empathy we have shared this year. A year that put us all to a hard test. But I will not hesitate to say we passed this test with a good grade. My dear students, you will soon be leaving the safe harbor, Natalie, and entering a very different type of world, one that would have been unthinkable just six months ago. It is now your task to keep alive the spirit of solidarity and understanding you have found here. And as Sarah said, to stand up what is right. The world certainly needs you, your ideas, your involvement, your contribution. You have come to this campus because you wanted to make a difference. When you started your studies here 10 short months ago, you might have had a vision for what role you wanted to play in the world, in the world once you have graduated. What the world needed then might be very different from what it needs now. As you are getting ready to celebrate this very special day, don't forget that we might need a new type of leadership in the times ahead. And you may have a paramount role to play here. I do believe in it as much. I do believe in you. A leadership that builds solidarity within our communities. A leadership that allows us to repair, prepare and embrace responsibility. Don't forget that institutions might have limited power to overcome their weaknesses. But people never do. Dear students, you carried on. Thank you so much for your hard work. For the sparks of light you gave us. I hope that the spirit of joy, persistence and community accompanies you on your next journey. You are not the corona promotion. <laughs> Please don't let the pandemic define you. You Natolinians are a group of incredible, resilient, talented young people who encountered a huge adversity and thrived in the face of it. I am proud, and you should be too, of what you have achieved. Proud to call yourself the Hannah Arendt promotion of 2019-2020, one of the strongest promotions I have ever witnessed here at Natalie. Thank you for that. If I may end on a piece of advice. 
everybody did, so I will the same. Being constantly forced to prove how multi-skilled we are, we tend to forget that some processes require time and consideration. Dear students, be open, be creative, dare to go against the tide. Do not be afraid. Life is not a race. Life is not a, only about achievements and skills. Life is also about sharing, about contributing, and serving others. Dear Arendtans, I wish you all the best from the bottom of my heart. Good luck. See you soon. Somewhere. Thank you very much, Madam Vice Rector, for this inspiring speech. And maybe also thank you for your unwavering strength for leading us, us Natolinians, meaning students and staff, on a daily basis, and particularly for your strength in the last months, for allowing all of this to happen, and for always showing us the way ahead. So thank you once again. I think it is the time for music. So I would like to invite the Natalin Choir to join us back on stage. And I think there is a surprise. Um, I would like to welcome you all uh, on the behalf of the Natalin Choir. Uh, I will not perform solo this time. <laughs> uh, I did it yesterday. Um, so this afternoon uh, we will perform three songs for you. Uh, and the first one is very special uh, because it's not going to be a live performance. Um, it's a testimony of our work during the quarantine. Uh, at that time, some students that uh, are f f fortunately here with us tonight, uh, back time, they were in their respective countries uh, and we decided to um, dedicate this song to all the frontline workers who are still fighting with uh, the pandemic. Please enjoy and stand by them.
much um, so now we will perform live uh, the first song will put you in a nostalgic mood so please take your tissues uh, it's when we were young by Adele and while listening to the song please imagine our first weeks on the campus uh, first classes first parties first loves uh, the second song is dream by the cranberries uh, and I will just quote the lyrics, uh, all my life is changing every day in every possible way. And I think no one here would like, never imagine that uh, our year in Natalin would be so suddenly interrupted by, um, by the pandemic. But uh, we managed to stay healthy, to stay self. So now please enjoy our last choir performance. Thank you and let's begin. <laughs>
Ladies and gentlemen, another round of applause for the Natural Inquirer, their final performance this year. <laughs> so I would like to invite Madam Vice Rector for a final but important announcement. ask to say very shortly, however, as Matthias said, it is important announcement. The patron of the next promotion is Mario Soares. So, suddenly, this marks the closing of this Natalie graduation ceremony 2019-2020. I was going back in time. Uh, but we have three more things for you. So as soon as we end here, we invite you to join us at the palace where you will find some desserts and drinks. On top of that, we have organized for you a photo opportunity, sort of professional photo bootka for all of you. And there is a farewell gift. You remember that at the beginning of the year, our team gave you a linen bag representing the campus of Natolin. By now, that bag maybe is not that white anymore as it used to be when you received it. And moreover, it's a bit too small, too tight to fit everything that you have acquired this year in terms of skills, in terms of knowledge, in terms of memories, in terms of experience. And we wanted something not that represents the campus, but represents you as a community, you Natolinians. So I invite you to the palace, and you will discover the surprise there. Thank you very much. Thank you to our viewers. Have a nice evening, everyone. Thank you. <laughs>